because all of a sudden when you're pursuing a goal and things get hard and you stop showing up, well, if you've immersed yourself, if you've engaged in that community, people start to reach out, especially if you're making people aware that you're doing this, that you're pursuing that and that you want to be held accountable. People start reaching out. They start calling you. They start, they start to re-engage and that community of accountability starts to show up. So community is that first element of being held accountable. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Flow Over Fear podcast, where it is our mission to help you to rise above fear and realize your ultimate potential in leadership and life. I'm your host, Adam Hill, and it is my goal to share with you the human side of high performance. My guests share their experience with fear, anxiety, struggle, challenge, and most importantly, despite all of it, how they rose above it to achieve incredible results. So if you're ready to rise up, let's get started. What's up, beautiful people? Welcome to Flow Over Fear and three things. And today I want to talk about three ways in which we can become more accountable accountability is kind of a tricky subject because we, we often look at accountability and, and, and we have to ask ourselves, what does that even mean when we want to be held accountable? I mean, a lot of times we put these big, big dreams out there, these exciting goals, you know, the big, hairy, audacious goal or something exciting that lights us up. And we, we may put a lot of thought into that. We may put it, we, we may even put a lot of thought into the plan on how we're going to get there, we may even hire a coach or, or do all of the right things to get us on track. But somewhere around a few weeks in or a few months in, some time into the future, before we have an opportunity to succeed, maybe it gets too hard. Maybe we get sick. Maybe something happens in our lives and we get distracted. And the dream just kind of fades away. We stop. We give up. And the accountability structure that we thought we had in place is nowhere to be seen. You know, what happened? What, what was the accountability that we were expecting? I mean, what do we expect whoever was holding us accountable to throw us into a dungeon or throw us or, or, uh, um, or shame us in some way? I don't think that that's, that's the effective route that we were looking for. And I think that's the problem is part of the problem is, is that we haven't effectively really defined what we want in accountability structure, but you know, you think about where where, how accountability works in our lives and, and what it really means. It, it really means it's just, it's a method of keeping us on track. It's a method of keeping us for, for the benefit of ourselves and our dreams and our goals and the people that we are once going to serve. It is keeping us on track so that we can be better positioned to, to continue to elevate even when things get hard. That's the whole point of accountability so that we have that mechanism in place. And a lot of times where we depend on that accountability might be part of the problem. We lean into people that, that love us in not the right way for this particular thing that we need that aren't willing to give us the tough love. It might be our spouse or our parents or our family members that we say, Hey, I want to be held accountable to this and wanting to be supportive as supportive as possible. They'll say, you got it, you know, go for it. We believe in you, but that's about as far as it goes. And that's no, no knock on friends and family for that very purpose, but there's not a lot of skin in the game for them either. Think about, you know, how that accountability works for them. What do they get out of imposing that accountability on you when things get hard and saying, Hey, you really missed the mark here. Let's step it up. Let's see how we can get you to the next level. What is their incentive on that? Usually not much. So the, the question is, where do we find that? I mean, instead, those, those folks, the people that love us, the family and friends, they're more incentivized to be encouraging and supportive when it gets hard. Say, ah, you know what? It's okay. You're still awesome. You're still amazing. You're, you, you've done great, which again, it's, it's not bad. It's just not the type of accountability we need, but we look at where accountability works in our lives and, you know, for good or ill, it it works in places where that accountability structure is built into a system that is mutual, where, where, where people are 
they have skin in the game where everybody involved in the accountability structure has skin in the game, not just the person working toward the goal. Think about where that works in our lives. Well, it works in our society when we, when we think about our laws and, and, and things like that, when, you know, we, we have accountability for people who break the law and, and there's skin in the game on all parts there. Meaning, you know, if we get a, if we park in a red zone, the, the, the police officer or, or the, or the parking attendant or whomever is, is reinforced or incentivized to actually give us a ticket, right? Or, or think about work where your boss is holding you accountable to, to a project. Well, that's because your boss is probably being accountable to a, to his boss or the board of directors or her, or, or, or her, uh, uh, boss or, or the, or the owner of the company. And the owner of the company, of course, or the board of directors, they are accountable to the results or loss of income or, you know, or things like that. So there's always this accountability of having mutual skin in the game in order for it to be effective. And really there's three, three ways I see in which, in which we can become more accountable, with keeping that in mind. And the first, and you could probably already anticipate this out of where, by, by where I'm going, uh, because we've said it before with regard to what works in order in, in, in terms of high achievement. Well, if you haven't guessed already, it's community. Community is the very first thing that, um, that helps us to maintain accountability. If we have the right community of people that are working toward the same goals or similar goals or, that or or a community that has mentors and people that also have skin in the game that are working toward this, you have the opportunity to be held accountable in those situations. The example I have there is with sobriety. Um, I mean, it, it happens in every community. It even happens in in another group that I'm in called Go Abundance that I've shared about before, where we're all a group of high achievers that, that have, that have achieved great things in our lives. And we want to keep leveling up in our lives. And the way we do that is by leaning on each other to help, help one another stay accountable. And so there is a strong dependence on my part or on the parts of anybody, any of the brothers in that group to continue to meet their, their, uh, uh, you know, to meet their goals or to keep pursuing their goals so that they are practicing the integrity that is needed in that group. Um, and the same, same is true within the community of sobriety, which is why it was so scary at, for me at first to even step into the rooms of, of recovery. It was scary because I knew I would be held accountable and I didn't know if I could do it. I didn't know if I could get sober. I was afraid. I was scared. And, and I, I was scared of myself really to that, that I wouldn't be able to do it. And that's where the community was helpful was that they lifted me up and showed me that through a framework, through a structure of accountability, through working a series of steps with a sponsor or somebody that was a mentor that had what I wanted, I could achieve sobriety daily and I could hold myself accountable to that structure by, by calling that, that, that sponsor or those people in there and, and it would help me get that get sober and their skin in the game was the very same. They wanted to keep their sobriety and they knew that part of sobriety was their 12th step, which was giving that sobriety away and, and, and helping others to achieve sobriety. It was immersing in that community and it was a community of accountability. Uh, and the same is true for any, anything like when I got into triathlon, one of the mistakes that I made at the very beginning was not getting into a community uh, right away and, and not immersing myself in that. But I was very fortunate that, uh, that my willpower lasted long enough that I finally found communities that could support me within a, within a few months. And, uh, and eventually, you know, the communities found me, which was, which was huge. And I found that that, that, that accountability existed in other arenas, uh, within other communities, um, so that we could all be mutually working towards similar goals. We would all have skin in the game 
And that would help with maintaining that accountability. Because all of a sudden, when you're pursuing a goal and things get hard and you stop showing up, well, if you've immersed yourself, if you've engaged in that community, people start to reach out, especially if you're making people aware that you're doing this, that you're pursuing that and that you want to be held accountable. People start reaching out. They start calling you. They start, they start to re-engage and that community of accountability starts to show up. So community is that first element of being held accountable, finding the right community. Well, what does it take to find the right community? Well, I recorded an episode on finding the right community, um, not long ago. And, and so that that's an episode that's available to flow over fear, but just to reiterate what, what is required in, in that type of community. Well, the first thing that you're going to need at a community is, is some sort, they, they have to have what you want. They have to be working toward the same goals. So they, if they're working toward the same goal, you know, that they have the same kind of skin in the game. And then the second part of that community is that there is an element of mentorship that there's that, that there's people in there that are willing to give away something like that. And be willing to kind of take the lead on that accountability piece. Um, and then the third piece, which is really, really, really important on this, especially within that place, you can't expect to be held accountable unless you're willing to hold others accountable as well, unless you're willing to lean into that. And that requires that you add value. Um, it requires that you add value with honesty, but caring honesty. And that's a delicate harmony that you have to, that you have to find, which is when you're, when you're caring and compassionate, but the, that, and you're not brutal with the honesty that, that you, that you show up in a caring and vulnerable way. Um, because that's the important part. That's why, unfortunately, when it comes to accountability, loved ones, uh, the people that are really, really close to us in terms of family and friends may tend to fail, fail us, but the right types of friends and community, the friends that are, that are working toward the same type of goals. Those are the type of community that help us because they're willing to be honest and open and straightforward with us that, uh, that we may be falling short or that we may have to up our game or, or improve in some way in order to become what we want to become. And they do it and, and it's a delicate balance, but they do it in such a way that it isn't shameful, that it isn't, that it isn't, uh, 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 it isn't making us feel uh, this toxic level of guilt. And then the second part of being held more accountable it, it, of getting accountability is, is comes from internally. It's making sure that we're setting clear expectations. This is really, really important because a lot of times when we set goals, it is really easy for us to be unclear on the goals. And a lot of times, and this is something you all need to hear, we make those goals vague. It's a subconscious thing that happens to us, but we, we make those goals so vague because it's a defense mechanism for if we don't achieve it. Meaning we don't give clarity because it gives us an out when we don't achieve it. Um, and it doesn't take away the shame of, of, of not achieving the goal because we know, we know in our hearts what we want to achieve, but our brain is trying to protect us by making those goals unclear. Think about, think about a goal that you might have for say, you know, say you, say you have a fitness goal, say your goal is to, um, is to be healthy, you know, or become fit. Uh, that's not a clear goal, right? So there's no definition of success and therefore there's nothing really to be held accountable for. But if the goal is, I want to, if the goal is smart, meaning it's specific, it's measurable, it's achievable, it's relevant and it's timed out, it's measurable. It's well, sorry, now I've got, but now I got it backwards. It's specific, it's measurable, it's achievable. I can spell guys, I promise you. It's, uh, it, it's achievable, it's relevant and it's time bound, then you can, uh, then you can start to, uh, hold accountable to that. So I want, instead of, I want to be healthy and fit, it's, you know, I want to go to the gym five days a week and improve this, these specific metrics. I want to, 
I want to finish an Ironman triathlon by the end of 2024 with, uh, uh, you know, by finishing in the top third of the group or, or something like that. Those are the goals that you can be accountable towards. A lot of times the best accountability structure on things like that or, or business related are accountability structures that are built on consistency. Are you consistently working toward that goal? Because if the goal is, I want to become an Ironman in 2024, well, the accountability doesn't really hit because there's no specifics on the plan to get there, on the consistency to get there, right? So you need to make sure that there's an accountability along the path of like accountability checkpoints. Like it's a weekly, hey, are you, are you doing the, have you done the workouts? How many workouts did you hit? Did you hit this threshold? Then uh, uh, that's, that's how... That's where that comes in. So there's clear expectations, not just of the end result, but clear expectations on the checkpoints along the way of what you want to achieve. Make sure that those are clear. Um, it's true of uh, finance, business, anything like that. Set those checkpoints. And it also allows you to get the fulfillment of knowing that you achieve those goals every single week or every single month or whenever that, whenever that time frame is. And then the final piece is is kind of the obvious piece about accountability. It's the reward and it's the consequence. And reward and consequence are really important because the reward a lot of times is the fulfillment of the goal. But there should be a reward that's consistent with the achievement. So for instance, if you have that fitness goal and and you're and you're working consistently on a weekly basis and you're holding yourself accountable to it, it doesn't necessarily make sense to have a reward of a rest day or a reward of like, you know, a ice cream social or something like that, because it is, it is something it's not aligned with what that, with what that goal is. When we do that, what we're telling our brains at that point, uh, if, if we're, if we're giving ourselves a rest day is we're saying that this activity that we're working on is is actually painful and I don't like it. And the only reason I'm doing it is to get to this small little look, this small little reward that we get, which is an ice cream social or a pizza day, or I don't know. I don't know why I reverted us to it to us back being like in middle school, but uh, you know, you know what I mean? The rest days, things like that. It's not aligned. We need to find something that's aligned with it. Right? So the alignment may be that, Hey, uh, if I'm training for an Ironman, uh, then every month that I'm training for an Ironman, I'm going to take, I, I, as a reward, I'm going to take myself on a bike ride in a fantastic venue that I've never been before. I'm going to take myself on a trip to somewhere so I can, I can see that, see that world by, by going on a run in, in this city or, or somewhere else. And that's how I'm going to tour the city. It makes it aligned with it. It gives you something exciting that's associated with that goal. And so it imprints that, that opportunity. So what if you turned that, that race into a vacation? What if you turned like those activities in, into that could be the same with, you know, with, uh, with starting a business, say, say you are a month in and you plan a party at your house to bring your closest friends in and a month into starting that business, you're going to, you're going to use that, that party as an opportunity to announce to them that you're starting this business. That, 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 so that party becomes part of the, the build up to that. That's an accountability of reward. Uh, rewarding yourself uh, uh, is, is a great way to hold yourself accountable. Now, the consequence piece of it, this one is a handle with care piece because consequence can become a shaming piece and we don't want it to become a shaming piece. We don't want to punish for failure. Failure is not a bad thing. Remember failure is, is a, is an opportunity or a path to the success. So in a lot of times we, we don't, we don't want to punish failure. We want to correct failure. We want to make sure that we're turning that failure into the right path. So we almost want to reward being, being, redirection back onto the back onto the path. So that's something to consider as well. But when it comes to consequence, we want to we want to make permanent failure painful. We want to make that 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 uh uh giving up on the dream painful. Uh 
but we don't want to make uh, we don't want to make failure shameful, if that makes sense. So if there is an element of like, well, I'm going to donate money to a cause that I don't like because uh, if I if I fail at this or something like that, well, as long as it's not shameful, you may be on the right track, but you have to really, really think about consequence as as something that is a redirection instead of a punishment. So that's that's kind of how you want to think about accountability. There's a lot of elements to unpack there. But if you can unpack them correctly, it can really, really help you to stay on the path of discipline and keep you on track. Find the right community, the community that will help hold you accountable and be honest and caring to you. Uh, and then make sure that when you're holding yourself accountable, have those clear expectations, not just at the end of the achievement, but on the waypoints toward that achievement. And then of course, have the have a great structure of reward and accountability that is aligned with the goals that you want to achieve and that's not shameful if you fail but is is correctional and making sure that it redirects back on the path that you need to achieve that's the best way to be held accountable i hope you have a great week thanks for joining me today we'll see you next time hey everyone thanks for tuning into the flow over fear podcast if you'd like to learn more about getting into flow and learn the foundations of flow, I have a free video series on my website at www.adamcliffordhill.com called The Foundations of Flow. Feel free to go there and download it and start your journey to rising above fear and achieving greater flow in your life. And if you like this episode, and I'm guessing you did if you stuck around for this long, then please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and you will receive notifications when I have new interviews, new recaps, and new trainings that pop up on YouTube. Thanks again for joining us.